pass them, do you? No, actually, I would agree with that verbatim. It doesn't seem crazy to me at all. In fact, the Bible has said that for thousands of years. It says in Leviticus 20, verse 30, that if a man lie with man, also with mankind as he lieth with a woman, even both of them have committed an abomination, they shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. So this guy is simply wanting to enact a law that was in the Bible thousands of years ago. And if I believe the Bible is God's word and that the law of the Lord is perfect. But if we're going by God's Word, and we're going by the Bible, and I'm assuming you're going by the Old Testament, I mean, when we look at some of the, the stuff in there, I mean, people could be sentenced to death for all sorts of things, including adultery, uh, including many other things as well. They could be sentenced to death. We'd be very busy killing people all the time. Well, no, I don't think so, because I think if those laws were in place, maybe people would stop doing such wicked and filthy things if we actually enforce laws against murder and adultery and, and rape and homosexuality and the things that God said, less people would be doing it because the death penalty is a deterrent. But, I mean, this is essentially Sharia law. I mean, and everybody at the moment is looking at Islam and Muslims and looking what's happening in the Middle East. And, you know, we, we only watched a video that was on YouTube the other day, which went viral all over the Internet of a gay man that was thrown from a seven-story building just because he was gay. Um, he was brought up to the top of this building and so on. Another gay man was dragged uh, by a car by his feet, dragged along the streets, beaten to death just for being gay. I mean, and we, we look at this and we, we deplore these acts, these horrible acts, you know, of violence. And we say this is disgusting. And here we are promoting it by saying, you know, in the state of California, American, which we seem, well, we seem to think it's a civilized society, are looking to bring in a law that basically puts sentence to people to death just for being gay. Well, speak for yourself, because I don't deplore those acts. You know, those people should be put to death. Homosexuality is disgusting, and homosexuals are violent predators that molest children and infect us all with AIDS through, uh, through all their promiscuous, filthy lifestyle. You know, I just finished a documentary called AIDS, the Judgment Where, 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 where pastor, does it say that homosexuals uh, molest children? Well, That's just a line you threw in yourself there, was it? Well, every single time you read about the homosexuals in the Bible, they're always raping somebody. And then all you have to do is open a newspaper and see all the children that they're molesting. So, you know, I'm not the person. Well, in the Bible, the maybe, yes, because many people raped each other in the Bible. I don't think consent was ever an issue 2,000 years ago. But when we look nowadays, I see stories all the time of people who are not homosexuals who are raping children and molesting children. I also see stories of homosexuals, yes, raping and molesting children, but I see stories of heterosexuals doing exactly the same thing. I don't think it's, uh, it's particularly homosexuals or heterosexuals. I think it's pedophiles well, that rape either children. Either way, you know what? The Bible says that they should be put to death. End of story. If the Bible's God's word, if anyone's going to claim to be a Christian and believe that the Bible is God's word, then they will understand that that is God's opinion of homosexuality. And you can try to pin it on the Muslims, but here's the thing. The Muslims have simply borrowed that from the Old Testament. Now, I don't believe in Islam, and there are a lot of false teachings of Islam, but they have borrowed some things from the Bible, and, and that's one of them. So that's actually one thing that they're right about if they're putting homosexuals to death. That's what the Holy Bible says that Christians carry to church every Sunday in Leviticus 20, verse 13. And, and so you basically applaud this guy for putting through an act which under American law and the freedom of speech he's quite entitled to do. It cost him $200 fee to propose this legislation, which in, say could go to state ballot if he gets enough signatures. I'm pretty sure you'd be the first person in the queue to sign it for him. Uh, do you believe that many people would support him? Is there many people, for example, in California more so? Now, I know he's originally, I think he's originally from Georgia. Um, I certainly know where, whereabouts are you from, Pastor Stephen Anderson? Which state are you from? I'm actually from California myself. I'm from Sacramento, California. Okay. Okay, well, how many Christians are there in, in, in California? Would you imagine that he could get, well, is it even conceivable that he could get 365,000 signatures? No, probably not, because so many Christians have been brainwashed by the media, and they've got their heads so far into TV and their heads so far into Hollywood movies that they probably don't even have time to read the book of Leviticus or understand it. And they don't really uh, care what the Bible says. They just go to their church and listen to the 20-minute feel-good sermon. And uh, they probably don't even know that these verses exist in the Bible, unfortunately. But there's still 7,000 men that haven't bowed the knee to Baal. But there's probably not 365,000. Okay. So, but you would, you would definitely sign us. Absolutely. I'd sign it in a heartbeat. 
All right, if you want to give us a call, you can. The number is 1850-410-494. That's 1850-410-494. You heard Pastor Stephen Allison. He would happily go along with this bill. It's uh, this new bill, which has been proposed in California. It's the Sodomite Suppression Act. And it just goes to show you the way some people still think out there. I want to go to John. Stay there, Pastor Anderson. Uh, John, you're in Cork. You're in Classic Kids. How are you? Oh, not too bad. Eh? Not too bad. Go, John. What do you want to say? I was just saying, like, like he dis- he's there deciding that, uh, pre- like, homosexuals should die. Like, what if I decide to pass a bill tomorrow that said priests should die because they believe in God and that I don't believe in that? So, mm-hmm. like, who's he to decide who dies or not? Like, what, what, what gives him the divine right? Well, what what gives you the divine right, Pastor Anderson? I mean, John says, well, maybe he should bring in legislation tomorrow to say that all Christians should die. Oh, well, there's already been legislation like that throughout history where uh, people who believe the Bible have been put to death and burned at the stake, so that would be nothing new. But the bottom line is the authority on which I would support this law is the authority of God's Word, the Holy Bible, which is the greatest authority in the universe. Uh, I, I don't know. I read Harry Potter last week. I thought that was pretty great. Well, then you're an idiot, okay, you because Harry fight, Potter fight, is not God's I, Word. I, and to compare Harry Potter to the Bible makes you a fool. Well, they're both just fictional books, if you ask some people, eh? Well, if you ask fools, they'll tell you that they're both fictional books, but the Bible is God's holy word. Well, I, I might think I might think you're a fool for believing the Bible, so I think Harry Potter is not, and mm-hmm. the Bible is for fools, and you're a fool. So what do you think of that? Uh, oh, wow. No, I think, so, I think he's so already expressed we, his feelings in relation to that. You obviously believe, John, that there's as much evidence for Harry Potter as there is for the Holy Bible. Yeah, they're both just books written by people, eh? Right, yeah. Okay. Okay, but okay. So, but what about do you, the question I originally asked in relation to freedom of speech? The reason um, these bills can be put through uh, in the United States and can be put to state is because of freedom of speech. Do you believe freedom of speech can never go too far? I think it can go too far when it comes to the likes of this carry on, where they want people to die, where they want to take life and all that. But like, I think a couple of months ago, you had you were talking about uh, freedom of speech when it comes to comedy, and can comedy go too far? Is that that's a form of freedom of speech as well, and that. Mm-hmm. One thing I don't—I don't believe comedy can go too far if it's if it's taken the right way. But I think if someone's gonna if someone's gonna try and take a life, then that is definitely going too far with freedom of speech. Right? All right, okay. And uh, let me go to Paul. Paul, you're in Dublin. You're on Classic Hits. How are you, Paul? No, how are you? Not bad. Not Good, Paul. Which one? Uh, I, I, with the freedom of speech thing, I think maybe it can go too far. But I also I, I kind of agree with the fact that he can say what he wants. Mainly, we should find out who the second nutters are. Take away from them. I mean, this guy, the guy on the uh, other line there, is obviously deluded. I mean, he's obviously reading that fictional book way too many times because he, he, he's not okay. Anyone who believes that you can put them, I mean, first of all, he, he kind of brought, which his argument always comes up with these Bible bashers that uh, if they're gay, if somebody is gay, they're immediately a pedophile. There's no correlation between the two things, they're both two totally different. Uh, what you call a sexual orientation. Mm-hmm. So that argument is out the window for starters. Um, well, well, Pastor Anderson will have the, have us believe different. That he, he'd is... probably tell us that frogs fell from the sky and there was a swarm of locusts and all that sexual shit actually happened. But do you, do, you, well, do you believe there's anything wrong with holding opinions? Say, for example, Stephen Anderson a- agrees with this guy and agrees with what we've seen on YouTube during the week, which was gay men being thrown from seven-story buildings just because they were gay in places like Saudi Arabia, etc. He believes there's nothing wrong with that, that that's acceptable, because that's God's word. So he's saying God intentionally wanted people to make other people suffer. I don't think a God would do that. I, you know, any so-called forgiving us. That'd be a vengeful so, thing. Uh, so what about, what about all the innocent people that are suffering from AIDS? And what about all the innocent people that are suffering at the hands of filthy pedophiles? What about them? Okay, they are the victims of homosexuals. So, they're not, there's, there's, hang on a second. There's many straight people suffering from AIDS. They're, okay, they're well, you know what? You need to visit, you need to so, visit AIDS.gov and the Centers for Disease Control website, where it shows that homosexual men are 50 times more likely to get AIDS than straight people. 50 times the AIDS rate amongst homosexuals. So don't tell me it's not a homosexual disease. I don't know if you can check it out now. Would AIDS be more prevalent in... You mean, well, well, okay, let's be clear here. We're talking about HIV more so than AIDS. AIDS nowadays is probably a thing almost of the past, yeah. Uh, yeah, HIV. HIV would be more 
prevalent. Well, look, no, that, look, that's the only factual statement he's made tonight, that HIV is more prevalent in the gay community, yes. Oh, it is, huh? Yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt. But it's not, I mean, I just find, I just find it, I mean, I think it's disgusting. Now, as I say, he has the right to say it. He can say what he wants. But I can, I can, as you, I've spoken to you before, I can choose not to listen to him because I, I know what he what says. But, do, but do, you, do you believe, for example, that <clears throat> Pastor Anderson or this guy, Matt McLaughlin, who obviously comes from the same stock, so to speak, do you believe they should be able to preach these words of what we believe is hatred in this country would be deemed as incitement to hatred? Do you believe they should be able to say it? I think he should, for the simple reason that you then get to find out who's the no case sir. And it's funny, if this guy, McLaughlin, is the US, if he believed in what he said so much, why is he all of a sudden get into hiding? Well, he's probably got too no, many. I, I, I imagine it's the case of too many people want to talk to him at the same time. Well, it's that or probably somebody wants to kill him like that. Well, I think I would imagine his... I mean, Pastor Anderson, can I ask you a question? I mean, you're quite public about your feelings in relation to homosexuals. I mean, I've seen some of your YouTube stuff, et cetera, et cetera, and some of the preaching that you've done. Do you ever fear for your own life? No, I don't at all, because I believe that God's going to protect me. So, obviously, I get death threats all the time, but God can protect me. I'm not scared of these people. Because, I mean, what you say, I mean, you've got to remember, there's a very large LGBT community in America, as there is here and across Europe. And particularly at the moment when this time, well, in two months' time in this country, we're having a referendum. Um, we will be voting in this country for same-sex marriage. Uh, it more than likely is going to be a yes vote from what we can b- predict so far. Uh, and, you know, at the moment, for somebody to step above that and say that gay people should be sentenced to death, you know, it's, it's just the most outrageous thing you could possibly say at the moment. Well, all that people are saying is exactly what the Bible says. You know, I'm not the author of the Holy Bible. It says in Leviticus 20:13, if a man also lie with mankind... As he lieth with a woman. I, I know, you've, you've told me that, Papa, but we don't, but Pastor Anderson, as much as people are religious, we don't live our lives literally word for word by a book that's 2,000 years old. Now, I'm not well, suggesting, by the way, do, that your book you know. isn't real. To you, it clearly is. But in saying that, it's 2,000 years old, or 2,000 years later, society has changed. Society can't be the way it was 2,000 years well, ago. Well, society has gone to crap, Okay. Back then, actually, there was the right morality that God laid out for his people. And, you know, some of us haven't changed, and some of us do live our lives based on the book that was printed 2,000 years ago, the Holy Bible. And so you can speak for yourself and in, in you and your atheist listeners, but honestly, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Not, not a, Go ahead, I know Bob. you are talking about this before, and there was something in the Bible, he just after making me remember it there, Apparently you bought your wife. You paid the fa- uh, her, her father for it. He did Fifty that- shekels. Yeah, did he? Did he buy his missus or did he? I mean. No, that was no, that was only if you raped a virgin. If you raped a virgin, I'm sure Pastor will correct me if I get this wrong. Uh, I don't. I'm I'm paraphrasing. But if you raped I'm a right virgin, you, yeah. If I raped a virgin, you can give her father fifty shekels. Yeah, you actually, you did get it wrong. <laughs> you know, you are wrong because the Bible teaches that if you rape a virgin, you're put to death, and that if you have sex with a virgin consensually then you pay her father the 50 shekels, and you have to marry her if she'll have you and if her father will accept you. Rape is punishable by death. That is just a lie that atheists repeat, that you have to marry the man who raped you. That is not what the King James Bible teaches whatsoever. It teaches that in a consensual situation, you have to pay the money and marry the girl. That's it. All right, just stay there for a second. Let me just go to Sienna. Sienna, how are you doing? You're on Classic Hits. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, how are you? I'm fine, Sienna. Um... I'm just flabbergasted. Um, You're flabbergasted. Just, yeah, absolutely. Just, what's his name? His name is Pastor Stephen Anderson. By Patrick. Pat, um, no, Pat. You, <laughs> Not oh, Patrick, no. No, Stephen is his name. Just call him Stephen. That will do, Sienna. All right, okay. Stephen. Do you have children? Yes, I have eight children. You do have children. Eight and children. And what have you got for? Many? Eight. Eight? Yes, eight. Right, and if um, obviously they're boys and girls, yep. and if one of your sons came in and said, well, Dad, I'm gay, or one of your daughters came in and said, well, Dad, I'm a lesbian, would you be to say, well, right, that's it, you're, you're going to die? 
Well, first of all, and that no, would never happen think. because people don't just accidentally, whoops, I'm right. gay. <laughs> okay, I'm <laughs> raising my... Gay. Well, do you want to... Can I answer the question? People don't just accidentally become gay. Okay, they're not born that way, despite what people lie and say. There have been eight major scientific studies on identical twins that proved that being a homosexual is not genetic. But theoretically, you know, if one of my children were to be gay, then they should be put to death. But, of course, that will never happen because I'm raising my children in a Christian home. Okay, okay. So so you've heard your answer, Sienna. If theoretically one of his children was to say they were gay, they should be put to death. They should be put to death. But you know what? And you're going by blah, blah, blah out of the Bible. And you're saying you would be happy enough. Are you a Christian, Sienna? Am I? No, I'm Catholic, but I wouldn't be no. Well, then you're Christian, I, I aren't you? Uh, no, she's right. Catholics are not Christians. Well, okay. No. I don't know. Most Catholics consider themselves Christians. Well, I was christened. You were, I was christened. You were christened? Yes. Okay. And I go to Mass and not time. The odd time. But I would never, if, you know, I have three children. I have two boys and one girl. Now, one is getting married shortly. Mm-hmm. And, as I said, two boys aren't gay. My daughter is in lesbian. But if they come in to me and said, okay, ma'am, I'm gay or I'm lesbian. You'd support them? I'd accept that because mm-hmm. I'd rather have them come in to me and say that and say, well, look, I found the lump and I'm dying of cancer. And how dare he get on and preach the Bible and then be prepared to send his own child to death? Do you believe in the commandments, Stephen? Uh, do I'm I believe you do. in the commandments? Obviously. It, it, you yeah. Mean, the commandments Obviously, in the Bible? Yeah. yeah. Of course. Thou shalt not kill. Of Thou shalt not kill. Well, yeah, you know what, That's, it's, it's thou shalt not murder, is what the Bible teaches. Jesus quoted that as thou shalt do no murder. And it's not murder to execute a criminal. The Bible teaches the death penalty for murderers, rapists, homosexuals, etc. Stay there if you can. I'm going to talk to, uh, after break again, we're talking to Pastor Stephen Anderson. And uh, he agrees with this. Pastor, can you stay with us for a few more minutes, yeah? Absolutely. I appreciate that. Thanks. So just a quick break here. So it'll be about two or three minutes on the break. So if you just hang on the line, Nyla, come back to you. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Hang on. Murdering gay and lesbian people in the state of California. It has been received by the state. Um, He's paid his money. And if he gets enough signatures, uh, it could come before the Senate. And it will also, um, uh, yeah, the state, uh, state, or go for state ballot, as they call it, in 2016. Their law works a little bit different to ours. It's called the Sodomite Suppression Act. And it basically proposes to have anybody who's gay sentenced to death and anybody who uh, puts out any gay propaganda or promotes uh, the ideology of homosexuality or lesbianism, uh, they would get a fine of $1 million and go to jail for 10 years and a lifetime ban from California. Pretty stiff stuff, all right, isn't it? That Uganda was bad. This is even worse. Text 53544. That's 53544. The reason they can do this is because of freedom of speech. The reason the Pastor Anderson is on the phone tonight is because of freedom of speech. I'm asking you, do you believe freedom of speech can go too far? Have you got an opinion? You're talking more. Call us now on 1850-410-494. Niall Boylan at night. Real Talk Radio. On Classic Hit 4FM. Jim McCabe. Any fancy a private hot tub outside your luxury treehouse? Could be your choice on our tea break teaser this week with thanks to Cottages for Couples. Romantic short breaks just for two in wonderful West Cork. We'll have CSI, of course, and more music variety as always with all of these classic hits. It all happens weekday mornings from 10 a.m. Classic hits, 4 FM. Introducing my prime with Horizon TV from UPC. Come on, show me what you got. Thousands of hours of entertainment, including Ireland's most popular box set. Oh, yeah? Great. Amazing movies and kid stuff. That's fair, nice. To watch anytime on any device at no extra cost. Peter. It is. Beautiful. Get Horizon TV, including My Prime, for just fifteen euro a month for six months. See more at UPC.ie. TNC supply to UPC.ie. Subject to availability. Price increases per device euro a month after offer period. Offer ends May first, twenty fifteen. What's new at the Pro Shop? LED lighting that works. 
Bud Master 2. The future is bright, so don't be afraid of the light. Green cubes, sky cubes, roof cube tents, the strong ones. Growshop.ie. Nutrients and mediums by Canna, Plagron, GHG, Bionova, and Biobiz. Hydroponics, aeroponics, and all your other grow needs. Growshop.ie. Summer, spring, winter, or fall, we can grow in the mall. Come into any of our three locations. Kulak, Dublin, Bruce Hill, Navin, or Dagushka, Galway. Or visit Growshop.ie. Coolio's. Imagine a school which provides exceptional teachers, unrestricted subject choice, superb study manuals, as well as personal attention for every student. Ashfield College specializes in preparing you for excellent Leaving Cert exam results. And with the new Ashfield Express bus service, Ashfield College Temple Oak is now accessible for all. Go to ashfieldcollege.ie to find out more about our 5th, 6th and repeat Leaving Cert programs. 50% of men over 40 suffer from erectile dysfunction. Are you one of them? I got the real me back at Fitzwilliam Private Clinic. Restore your performance and self-confidence with professional help from Fitzwilliam Private Clinic. Specialists in non-invasive treatments. There's so much to gain at fitzwilliamprivateclinic.ie. Spent ages searching for a better insurance deal lately? One call to First Ireland Insurance will get you our best deal. We'll compare up to 35 products from 20 insurers to find great prices on home and motor insurance for all ages nationwide. Call 1890-323-323 or click firstireland.ie. First Ireland. We price around so you don't have to. First Ireland Risk Management Limited Trading as First Ireland Insurance is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Hi, I'm Barbara and this is Crackle is Killed on Classic Hits for FM. Er a shade law to me more than my dignity card. Bruno Living Legends Award at Frank Sinatra. August for Garita Franklin Suit Lifetime Achievement Award. Egna Grammys. Er an coigu law to me more than my dignity. Tina the Rolling Stones Conra Lord Shaftu Million Dollar. Ben a made a small arrogant a he knew Eddie of Egan Arm. August a shin done an upcoming US tour of Yaku. In my day, Shaska Kahat, she had the Beatles, the Hugh, the rock stars, the new tough bond, the Soro Ishta, and Madame Tussauds Wax Museum in London and me, Martha. And in Sue Lost, the Hipkin V. Kama, for a Hugh Lauer that John Lennon published in his own right. But your scale said Dante are the line drawings of the Insa. By Shin and Kade, solo project of the Eggdunas and the Beatles. Shin A. Crack of his kill, air classic hits for FM. Niall Boylan at night is controversial and confrontational and may cause offense to some. Listener discretion is advised. Niall Boylan. Real Talk Radio. Classic hits for FM. Yeah, sure enough, Matt McLaughlin and Pastor Stephen Anderson are actually right. Leviticus 1822 and Leviticus 2013, having homosexual intercourse between men should sentence them by death. Uh, and I'm assuming that's part of the, the, the part of the, the Bible that you're talking about, obviously, Leviticus 18, 22 and 2013. Yeah, that's not the only part of the Bible, because the same thing is reiterated again in the New Testament in Romans chapter 1, where it says that they which commit mm-hmm. such things are worthy of death. And it also says in okay. the book of Jude that Sodom and Gomorrah was an example of God, you know, raining fire and brimstone and destroying that city because of the homosexuality, that that's an example unto those that after should live ungodly. I'm just, you know, I walked by McDonald's today, uh, you know, one of the, the local malls here. According to Exodus 23, 19, anybody eating a cheeseburger in there should really be sentenced to death as well because they're mixing meat with dairy. Yeah, there's no such verse in the Bible that says anything about mixing meat with dairy. So I don't know what in the world co- you're talking about, but there's no such verse. Um, being a male is not circumcised, Genesis seventeen fourteen. No, you are making things up because, first of all, I'm not, I'm not making them up. Yes, you are. Read the verse then. Go ahead and read the verse about mixing meat and dairy. There is no such verse. Performing any work on the Sabbath, Exodus 20, 20 Okay, well, here's the thing your ignorance of the Bible is not something that I have to answer for. In the New Testament, we do not observe the Sabbath. And in the New Testament, God has told us that we may eat all things. So the fact that you don't know how to rightly divide between the Old and New Testament is not my fault. God reiterates all of the same teachings on homosexuality in the New Testament. Okay, striking your parents or cursing at your parents. Um, well, I, you know those, what? If someone uh, strikes their parents, then they should be put to death. They should be put to death. Absolutely. And adulterers should be put they, to they death. They shouldn't be just sent to their room and, you know, have their Xbox taken off them. If someone actually hits their parents, then they should be put to death. <laughs> and if someone uh, commits adultery, they should be put to death. Absolutely. Are they not just laws of moral tar? Should they not be just laws, uh, moral laws? In other words, what do they call it? Moral turpitude, isn't it? 
Well, I don't know what you call it. I would call it sin, and I would call it capital crimes, according to the Bible. Okay. You can text us at 53544. We're talking to um, Pastor Stephen Anderson uh, in relation to the law that Matt McLaughlin, who's an American California lawyer, has proposed a bill, and it's called the... Oh, gosh, I'm forgetting the name of the bloody bill now. It's called the Sodomite Suppression Act, and basically it proposes to have anybody who's gay sentenced to death. Yes, you heard me right. This is in the law of California. Let me go to Tina. You're in Dublin. You're on Classic Kids. How are you, Tina? Hi, yes. Go ahead. Um, I think that pastor is a very sick man. And you know what it is now? I'm tired of people like him using God and the Bible for their own twisted, evil nature. And that's what they are doing. They're living in the Old Testament. There is a new covenant, a new testament that is brought in by the Lord Jesus Christ. And he himself said, when the woman is being, won't be stoned for um, adultery, he who has never sinned cast for stone. As in God's eye, sin is sin. It doesn't matter whether you're a thief or whether you're a homosexual. It says you have all sinned and fallen short of God's standards. And that's why the Lord Jesus had to die for us. Sin is sin in God's eyes. There is no difference. So you, as, as much as you are a Christian and you believe it's sinful, but the, the lifestyle of homosexuality is sinful, you would never suggest for a minute that anybody should be sent to death for it. Of course not. The Lord, God, it, it says that God so loved the world that he sent his son to, for every sinner. He, he has died for every sinner, but he doesn't distinguish between a person who steals or a person who murders or a person who's homosexual. Sin is sin. We have all sinned and fallen short. That's why we need a Christ to die for us. And these people are living in the Old Testament. The Old Testament finished with John the Baptist, and when Jesus then came into his ministry and he died, it's a new covenant. It's a covenant of love and grace of God that is available to everyone. And God said, I do have not sent my son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him may be saved. Well, if you're, uh, well, okay, we'll let Pastor Anderson respond to that if you can. Yeah, I'm definitely not living in the Old Testament. I'm living in the New Testament. Like, for example, in oh, Romans. Well, Sorry, oh, okay, you. I guess I can't. I guess I can't respond. No, we'll go ahead, uh, we'll go ahead. Well, hang on, Tina. Let him respond, Tina. And then I'll let you come back in. Go ahead. Go ahead, yeah, Tina. Romans chapter 1, New Testament. Who, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. He just finished saying, men burning in their lust one toward another, men with men, women with women. And it says that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. And then also in the book of Jude, again, in the New Testament, it says, Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, strange like queer, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire, likewise also these Filthy dreamers defile the flesh, on and on. There's plenty of New Testament scripture that just confirms yes. Yes. and reiterates right. not, that which is taught in the Old Testament. And so, no, I'm not living in the yes. Old Testament. There, there's plenty of scripture in both parts you are of the Bible. In the old. Sorry, can I, can I speak? What, what you're saying is the Bible is telling you, yes, that is sin. To go and steal is sin. It's, it's telling you it is sin, but that in the New Testament... Christ has made provision for that sin. He's not saying it's worse than any other sin. He's just telling you it is sin. Yeah, but, but for you to say that... To be, to be for you to say that no, all you're, sin you're, is you're, equal you're, is a bizarre teaching that is not found in the Bible. Because the Bible... For example, Jesus, when he stood before Pilate, said that the Jews had the greater sin than Pilate did. Well, how could the Jews have a greater sin than Pilate if, according to you, all sin is equal? It's because all sin is not equal. And no, stealing a pencil yes, is not as bad as raping someone. I'm sorry, that's is, ridiculous. In the eyes, all have sinned and fallen short of the standards of God. For, for you to have to, this, to have never sinned, you would have to have every thought completely pure. So, so, have, so are you advocating anarchy? Like, and are that's you that's saying that we should have no laws? But, 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 but no, the point you're making is, Pastor Anderson, sinned, I mean, so is, is every, well, laws. hold on a second, Pastor Anderson, is every thought you have pure? No, it isn't, no. Absolutely not. Well, then you're a sinner. Of course I'm a sinner. I never said I wasn't a sinner, but I'm not 
a dangerous sinner. criminal. Okay, sinner. that's there's a difference. But 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 homosexual people are not criminal. dangerous criminals. The Bible says but they I, are dangerous. Homosexual criminals. people are not dangerous yes, criminals. Yes, they are. They They're may, in your eyes and in Tina's eyes, be sinners, and that's open to. So that's subjective. That depends on whether they're Christians or not. And in your eyes, they may be sinners, but they're not criminals. Yes, they are criminals. Not a danger to society. Is rape a crime? Is molestation a crime? They're filled uh, with what, what is my friend? I have a friend of mine who's a gay man. How is he a danger to society? Ta- explain to me how he's a danger to society. Well, sure, because he's a rapist and a pedophile, and he's probably filled with disease. No, he's not a rapist and a pedophile. He's a good friend of mine, well, and he has a boyfriend, to... and he plans to get married very soon. According to the Bible, he's a rapist and a pedophile. So... But you, well, well, the Bible doesn't know him. The man who, the people who wrote the Bible, going back uh, almost two thousand years ago. Well, it wasn't even two thousand years ago. Uh, the, those people don't know my friend. They well, don't know I, the gay people on this planet now. Well, I encourage people to go on YouTube and watch the documentary "AIDS: The Judgment of God," which gives all the statistics straight from the CDC. Oh AIDS. yeah, Donna Dr. Summer said that too, didn't she? Pardon mm. me. Donna Summer said that as well, didn't she? Now, can I say something? Yeah. The judgment of God was on the body of Christ when he died. That's the judgment of God. He judged every sin in Christ. He is not judging anything in any other way. People might get sick, but that the judgment of God is in Christ. He's not going to rejudge us. It's a new covenant. It's the covenant of love. Can I, can I ask you a question, Tina, because I have a lot of people to talk to, but in relation to this bill that has been proposed under Californian law, now I don't know how far it will get, um, do you believe this tells us that freedom of speech can go too far? Are you asking me? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. And I believe in freedom of speech completely, uh, because as that man said earlier, it brings out the weirdos. That's fine. Mm. Let people speak, because people don't have to accept what they say. But I think, yes, freedom of sh- has to be protected at all costs. Do, do, does does people or do people like Pastor Stephen Anderson make you ashamed to be a Christian? Yes, in actual fact, I I think he has a very warped, and I I'm ashamed of any person coming on and and portraying the love of God in that way. He is wrong. He is one hundred percent wrong. That is not what the love of God, as I said, sent his son, and through Christ he has forgiven every sin. And I believe that you just accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, and, and that's it. You know what? This is okay, so okay. false to say that he has forgiven every sin because he only forgives the sins of those who believe on Jesus Christ. He doesn't forgive everyone. And the Bible clearly says in Romans 1 that the homosexuals are uh, haters of God. So, no, they don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, not, and they are not uh, forgiven. So so, so what, are you, what, what are you saying to us, Stephen? If the homosexual, when he's arrested in California, if this law happened to go through, uh, turns around and repents for being a homosexual, and find himself a girlfriend, well, then he's okay. He'd be forgiven? No, I never said any such thing. So I'm, I'm not sure where you got that, but I didn't say anything like that. But he can the homosexual repent? Oh, he should be just put to death. He can't exactly. even have no, an opportunity to, to repent. Period. That's what the Bible says. Put him to death. Leviticus 20.13. Romans 1.32. Romans one thirty two. But, acor- it's the New but according to this law, can I just say that this guy Matt McLaughlin in California, and he's a lawyer. You would imagine he's a very intelligent man. He says that in relation to the gay sex, as he refers to it as a monstrous evil that the Almighty God commands us to suppress on pain of utter destruction and causing gay people to be put to death by bullets to the head or by any other convenient method. Let me go to June Junior in Kildare. You're on Classic Hits. How are you? Hi, now. I'm fine. And you? Good, June. What would you like to say? Um. I'd like to ask, uh, um, I'm not going to call this man a, a pastor, because I don't, I don't want to honor him with his title, but um, is his first name Stephen? Stephen, yes. Uh, Stephen, could I, I, I'm going to ask you a question that um, you believe in the Bible uh, literally. Absolutely, yes. Um, I, I want to ask you something. Um, you, you. How old do you think? How long do you think humans have been on this earth? Well, the world was created approximately six thousand three hundred years ago. And so, um, you believe that uh, you believe that we lived among dinosaurs? Is that what you think? Well, that would make sense since people in the Old Testament described seeing dinosaurs in the book of Job. 
So since they were describing dinosaurs thousands of years before the fossils of dinosaurs were discovered in the 1800s, well, it's pretty safe to say that they were looking at them and describing them when you read uh, the book of Job, chapters 40 and 41. Well, I'm sorry, but I mean, like, do you have any grasp of the sciences at all? Well, I have a lot more grasp of science than you, apparently, since you think that actually everything came from nothing and that thing, you know, animals turn into other animals. There is no evidence of that. You actually think that everything in this universe came from nothing. <laughs> Things don't come to Hey, laugh, laugh laugh it up, but you know what? Things don't come to life by themselves. Show me one time that anybody in any laboratory has brought something to life. Only God can create life. And where did the first life form <laughs> come from? Answer me that. Where did the first life form come from? I'm not I, I'm asking you about dinosaurs. No, I want you right? to answer me where the first and life form on this planet existed. came from. Yeah, but they're 350 million years ago. Oh, so so Humans 350. Around so them. basically, life comes from nothing because 350 million years ago. Yeah, that makes sense. No, it happened long before three. I'm telling you. Okay, that, but, but, oh, do I'm me a favor. Let's not get into the creationism million. argument because we could be here all night. Because I'm, for, Pastor Anderson is never going yeah. to agree with you, uh, June, but, and you're never going to agree with him. He is completely going to deny science uh, till you're blue in the face. So let's get I back to the, the argument science. we're talking about. You deny about. science. Hey. No, no. Uh, oh, you science! Science, science that, says that, science has proven. You before, hey, science has proven. You talking about Noah's Ark. Science has proven that spontaneous laugh, like generation show. is Can false. Oh yeah, and Noah really did build a boat. Hey, and all those spontaneous animals. generation has been proven false by science. Explain that. Okay. Right, spontaneous look, I, I generation don't have the is answers. what you believe. No in. more than Richard Dawkins. No more than Stephen Hawking. No more than I know more than those the world fools. Will be able to give you all the, the answers, answers Stephen those Anderson, that you were looking for. Nobody can give you all the answers. But let's not rule out anything. That's the way I look. Yeah, those at guys life, are a bunch right? of Star Trek uh, geeks. Richard yeah. Dawkins. Well, well I would hate to think what they would call you, but yeah, whatever. That's beside it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they're idiots. You're the one who's going to tell me that you know Noah, Noah had a boat and had millions of animals on it for forty days and forty nights. And yeah, you know that shit. that boat so, story is really far fetched, but spontaneous generation makes a hell of a lot more sense. Is that that's what you believe? Right? Okay, well, let's move back to what we're talking about. June, I, I make my other point. Yeah. Okay. Please. If we if we can I stick to the original thing we're talking about, this is legislation they're trying to push. Well, this guy is trying to push to in California. Uh, would you agree? Well, obviously you don't agree. With us. But do you believe that no. freedom of speech goes too far? Yeah, when, when it incites hatred against a group of people that, that they should be executed, I mean, what gives this, Stephen, what gives you the right to preach that you have an authority to decide who lives and who dies? I have gay friends. I'm supposed to agree with you and that they should... They should have somebody come up and, and shoot them in the back of the head. What sort of a creep are you? Well, no, I think they should be shot in the front of the head, and the one that gives me the authority to say that is God when he said to preach the Word. So I'm preaching the Word of God. Almighty God has given me the authority to preach the Bible. Well, would you, would you be willing to carry that out with a gun? If it were legal, I believe in somebody? abiding by the laws of the land. And so I'm not going to take the law into my own hands. I don't believe in vigilanteism. But if it were legal, you know, I would take that job, yes. You are, uh, I don't have a word for you. You're, you're totally repellent. Okay, that's a lot of text. So he says, now, will you tell Stephen this? I feel sorry for his children. They must be brainwashed and taught hatred. What a sad little man he is. The person says, I think Stephen may have some sort of mental issues. Well, no, he studies the Bible. Another person says, Pastor Stephen is literally off his head. According to the Bible, uh, my arse, does he not realize that he, uh, we, he is wasting his life living through his Bible? I feel so sorry for him. He needs some sort of review. He is the biggest sinner I've ever heard on radio tonight. Imagine a God that advocates murder. Sure, we'd have no one left in the world for him to preach to if we went down that route. Okay, let me go to, um, I think it's Carol. Is it Carol? Yeah, Carol, you're in Galway. You're on Classic Kids. How are we going, Carol? Hi, Niall. How are you? Good. What do you want to say? Oh, I'm just totally sickened. Mm-hmm. Just getting up straight about the minute here listening to that man speaking. Like, I can't believe he actually there compared homosexuality with rape, murder. He was like linking them all together. Yep. Rape and murder hurt other people. Homosexuals are not hurting other people. They're not harming them. They're not criminals. I just, I can't. 
can't believe I just well I'm becoming more atheist every day and I have been for the last couple of years and the like of that tonight really I'd like to take the Bible and rip it in front of us because it's like it's that finesse that comes out of our, these man-made religions that's destroying the world run today oh like, yeah I, but I, when, I, it's, I, when it's fanatics fanatics it's and fanatic. I, I would describe it as Stephen Anderson as a fanatic who I mean I, everyone can believe what they want and I don't have a problem with that and the fact that I'm believing less and less that's my problem but the bottom line is that type of fanaticism is, we have it out in other countries like us. Do you, well, well, well how, do you accept, Stephen, that you're a fundamentalist? Absolutely, I'm a Or do you find that insulting? No, I, I like that. You don't, you do, you're not insulted by that at all? Not at all. But that generally is an insulting term, to refer to somebody as being a fundamentalist. When we look at Islamic fundamentalists, we, we are being insulting purposely when we call them fundamentalists. So why don't you take that as an insult? Well, I, think, I think being a faggot is an insulting term. I, I don't consider being called a fundamentalist or a Christian or a Baptist insulting. Those are those are good terms. Well, I'm, well, I'm glad I'm, I'm glad you think being yeah. a fa- calling somebody a faggot is insulting because it is insulting. Now, does he call, uh, sorry, can I ask? Yeah, that's why I use that term every chance I get to describe homosexuals. Faggot. Excuse exactly. me. Sorry. Does he call himself a Christian? Is, is he actually pretending to be a Christian? Because like. Christianity, I was taught growing up, was totally, totally different to that. I mean, where's morals and, you know, not be judgmental and, oh my God, like, it's just unreal. I can't believe he's for real, to be quite honest. Mm-hmm. But I have heard him speak on the show before about other subjects and there were was hilarious, totally crazy opinions. But all I'd worry about tonight is there's more of him around. Well, he's got eight children. Who well, will not, all go up? I'm assuming, Pastor. I'm assuming, Pastor Anderson, and I don't want to be disrespectful to your children. Uh, they will all grow up thinking the same as you. Well, I'm That's sure that they will. Yeah, everything brings forth after its own kind. You know, tell that to Richard Dawkins. But the bottom line is that it's not just me and my eight children. I have millions of people who listen to my sermons online. I mean, go to my YouTube channel. There's like 20 million views. So, so would you be proud of your children if you heard, you know, your 16 or 17 year old? turn around and say, Dad, I think you're right, and I'm so proud of you, I think all homosexuals should be sentenced and put to death. Well, there's, there's pretty proud much no kids. doubt in my mind that every single one of them is going to say that. So, I'll say, that's my boy. Uh, oh, God, that just makes me sick. Okay, if you want to give us a call, we'll say that a If you want to give us a call, no, you can. The number is 1850 410 494. That's 1850 410 494. That's my boy. Michael, you're in Dublin, you're on Classic Hits. How are you, Michael? Nice, nice to talk to you. Um, uh, hold on now, that guy has a... That, I just, well, first of all, America is a very strange country. So if I went over to America in the morning, I was just saying to you, one of your researchers, I could start a religion in 48 hours. Mm-hmm. And I could come out with the greatest old crap. And I would probably have a thousand followers. Yeah. And then 48 hours, I'd probably have, I'd probably have maybe 20,000. Sometimes America lives in a time warp. Now, there's so many religions around the world that people are absolutely confused. Which is what? What's that? What's this? This? That? That? But listen to that guy there tonight. Now, he doesn't. He doesn't scare me. I really because there's thousands of people like him. So we. But does it? But does it not scare you that there's thousands of people no, no, like no, him? No, 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 no. Because he is just in a minority of those sort of people who think the same as he does. Not everybody. If if I would be very very scared, if twenty million or thirty million people taught on the same wavelength as that guy, well, they do. I would really, I really would be scared. Well, we well, for example, um, they do believe that fifteen percent of Muslims, fifteen to twelve, fifteen to twenty five percent is the get is the estimate are fundamentalists. Yeah, so if it's 15 to twenty five, that's one hundred and fifty million people. So that if, we, if we even just go by by Islam. 150 million people also believe that, that gay people should be sentenced to death. Yeah. Now, the only thing I will... A lot of people. I, I will, yeah, well, I will agree... Sorry, can I... Yeah. I will agree... And I, he said something about his family, and I have to put my hand up to that, because he was saying about... Somebody asked him about, well, if his daughter actually said it to him, uh, I, I think I'm gay. Well, that will never happen, because the man has just said it himself. He says, from the time his kids are born, from the time they can walk and speak... He will actually, he will actually teach them the way he's thinking and his thinking ways. And by the time, that but that doesn't mean they won't be gay. No, no, no. But by the time they're fourteen or fifteen, because he's so caught up in this, um, 
um, uh, what you call it, balloon of religion, mm. that they will go that way and they won't be gay. No, but, the, no, but they could be gay. No, they won't be gay. Yeah, but you hold on a second. We, we live in a Catholic country, and up to gay. 20 years ago, a very fundamentalist Catholic country, um, and yes, we have gay people. So yeah, where do they all come from? Yeah, I'm not Catholic. A lot of the Catholic people don't. I know you're yeah, not. I know you're not Catholic. Of, no, no. A lot of the Catholic people, a lot of the Catholic people, don't go to the church anymore because of the disaster what happened to the church. So, not, I, I, are you saying that if somebody is brought up, Michael, in a Christian family, uh, you know, with Christian values, that they won't they won't turn out to be gay? I'm not saying they won't turn out to be gay. They'll have a choice. But this guy that you have on the radio there tonight is making no choice. Like if 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 my daughter or my son. Like, I, 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 if my daughter and my son came to me and said, look, Dad, I'm gay. I'm gay. Right, I'd say, okay, I'm not you. All right, it's your life. But I'm not taken the same way as this other guy that you okay, have. Okay, that's fine. That's, no, that's, that's what I'm trying to come at. I'm okay, so you, so you wouldn't be comfortable with it because you believe you're a Christian and you don't believe it's right. But in saying that, you would support them because they're your child. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yes, yeah. absolutely. Okay, they that's okay. But this guy, does, this guy is given no choice to his family. No, and this guy, no. He he said they, if one of his children was gay, they would be sent. They should be sentenced to death. Well, you see, that but that's what he believes in. Yeah, and I really, I believe. And you see, he's going to breed that into his children. Oh, he has. Yeah, he's actually from the time from the time his children can go to kindergartens, he will breed that into his children, mm-hmm. and they will be so scared that they will absolutely go down that path, and they will think that for the rest of their lives. No, 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 well, can I ask? I want to ask the pastor that in relation to your children, okay? And, I, and I, it's a little bit unfair to talk about your children because they're not really on the air to defend themselves. But in relation to, say, for example, the Westford Baptist Church, we've spoken to many times. I don't know what your opinion on them is, uh, but we've spoken to them many times. And Louis Thoreau did some great documentaries on the BBC in relation to them. And many of their children and their family moved away from the family because they hated the family so much because of the way the family brainwashed them into a certain way of thinking. And well, isolated them from the world. Yeah, our church is absolutely nothing like Westboro Baptist Church. They seem to be a bunch of inbred looking freaks and weirdos, and they don't have a real church. They're freaks. They, they, at yeah, at they least are. they don't kill people. I'm not suggesting no, actually, killing people. They, they, call, they call them fags. They are right. weirdos. And actually, several of them have, law, de- several of them have law degrees. And it, they have this scam of, you know, picketing funerals, and then they get sued, and then they counter sue, and they make a bunch of money. And it's basically just a media circus in order to demonize anybody who believes the Bible so they can be compared to the freaking circus that is Westboro. You know, I don't want to be compared to them. But but a lot of people are listening to you tonight, and with respect, they're saying you're a freak well, because you're, you're advocating the death penalty for gay people. Well, they've been you brainwashed I mean? by TV and Hollywood. So. They've been brainwashed. Absolutely. What have you been, you've been brainwashed by a no, book. I haven't. A, a book doesn't you, brainwash you. Of course you, you. have. You're no, saying they're brainwashed by TV no, and modern society. You know society. what brainwashes and, you? Okay, and by the way, in relation to some of that, I probably agree with you, right? Okay, but in saying that, you know, you've been brainwashed by a 2,000-year-old book. Look, a book can't brainwash you. Eight hours in school a day and five hours of television a day will brainwash you. You know, I haven't read the Bible for 13 hours a day. I wish I did, but I haven't. So, no, a, a book doesn't brainwash you. It's school But you're living your life, Philip. Radio. Book. You live your life by the book, Of course season. I do. I love the Bible. Yeah, so... Uh, but it's well, not then you are brainwashed by it. So, so, so it basically, if you, if, if you like and read a book and believe in it, then you're brainwashed? So, what about no, Stephen no, no, Hawking? Michael is he brainwashed no, by Michael physics? sounds like a nice guy. Hold on a second. Michael is a Christian, sounds like a nice guy, you know, but, you know, he would support his child as much as he probably wouldn't agree with his child being gay. And I accept his view on that. That's fine. But he, w- he would still support them. He doesn't have any evil in his heart. I can hear, I can feel evil in your heart. Well, I, you're feeling, yeah. your feeler's I, a little off because I'm not evil. I, yeah, Michael, sorry. I just wanted to get back to this guy again for a minute because. It's very, very concerning about this guy. I would be, he, this guy seems to be, he is brainwashed because I remember, um, I remember a couple of years ago, the book Catcher in the Rye. Now, your man, Mark Chapman, was so, he was so engrossed with this book and what he read in the book. Now, I only, I, he actually, it was got so bad they had to take the book off the bookshelves in New York. And I don't know whether it's still, you can still get it today. But I remember I got a copy of it in England. And I read some of it, and it really is. But Mark Chapman, now I know you're saying, well, what's got Mark Chapman got to do with this? I'm coming from the angle. Mark Chapman got so wrapped up in this book, he really believed that John Lennon was 
be evil. Mm -hmm. But this guy now, this guy you have on the radio, he really is captured baited. You can see it in you can you can I don't know I don't I, I can't see the guy, but you can read it in his in his, in his, in the way he's speaking. He is absolutely manufactured by this this Bible he's reading. And he's going by every detail, every dot, every comma. And sometimes you have to use your own mentality and your own brain. Is that is that not a fair point, Stephen, that, you know, when we talk about the Quran or the Bible, that you have to interpret it into a modern society? Yeah, absolutely. So I've interpreted it in a modern society. I read about how the Bible said that homosexuals should be put to death and how they're always raping people and forcing people to have sex when they don't want to. And then I opened the newspaper and there were a bunch of homosexual pedophiles and all the statistics show that homosexuals are way more likely to be caught being pedophiles. And I was able to interpret it to modern I don't know where society. you got those statistics from. Oh, really? Well, look up the statistics. I, I think it would be more likely that pedophiles are more likely to be homosexual rather than homosexuals likely to be pedophiles. Well, six I don't know where that pedophiles tend to pick on young boys yeah. because they're more vulnerable. They're both one and the same. And let me compare it to something else. No, they're both. They're not both one and the same. Yes, they are. And you by do the understand way, that pedophilia the, is a sexual also, preference, just be, like just like homosexuality, just like heterosexuality. Well, the next verse after it condemns homosexuality, it condemns bestiality in the same breath because homosexuals. So do being that a homosexual too. is the same as having sex with a dog, is it? It's exactly, absolutely. Ask Elton John. Okay, stay there, well, stay there for a second. I want to go to Blaine. Blaine, you're in Cork. You're on Classic Hits. How are you? How's it going, nice? How you doing, Blaine? You want to talk to Pastor Anderson. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, Pastor, I just want to say, like, um, you're back living in the Stone Age if you're on a boat. Doing, um, you want to kill people who are homosexual. And another thing, you're saying that um, homosexuals rape children. Like, a lot of priests have raped children as well. That's because a lot of priests are homosexuals because Catholic priests don't get married. They go in a cloister with a bunch of other men, and they're a bunch of fags. So I'm married with eight kids as a Baptist pastor. I'm not a Catholic priest. And, yes, a lot of Catholic priests are fags. That's why they molest children. So, like, how do we know, like, uh, some pastors out there in your church doesn't molest children? How do you know? Because we don't separate children from their families. We don't, we don't send children off in a room with, with another person like, like some churches do. Yeah, we keep all, the children with their them, own family. All them children you're raising, all them children you're raising are all very brainwashed as well. Like you, have, you have sick, horrible lives, and you, are, you all act in happy families. So being married and having eight kids is a sick, horrible life, but having anonymous gay sex in a bathhouse when, and getting AIDS and syphilis and gonorrhea is a wonderful life? Can you explain that to me? When, and every every gay person does that, yeah. Well, when your kids get up, go up. I know I know a lot of heterosexual people who go off and get HIV and syphilis and all those gonorrhea and all those other diseases you mentioned. Well, you know what? AIDS started out as being only amongst gays. Do the research, watch the video AIDS the Judgment of God, and it shows all the news reports from the early eighties where it's it was afflicting homosexuals. And it was then, prevalent in the gay community. I'm not telling that prevalent. for a minute. I'm it was suggesting for a minute that it isn't. To Sarah Gray says on Twitter, Niall, uh, he says all our homosexuals should be killed. Can you ask him, would he personally kill as uh, that, uh, oh, oh God, sorry, it's scrolling past me here. As that where, but as that where it really, that's where it really crosses the line. Uh, would you, oh, you, you did say you would personally kill somebody if you were, if you were the person selected to do the punishing. Yeah, if it were legal and if I were appointed to do so, but I would never take the law into my own hands. But you would be what able to do it if you if you course. were appointed as the the person. Absolutely. What kind of God? What kind of God wants to see uh, other people kill someone? Like, Jesus you know? Christ, the author of the Bible. That's which God. No, God doesn't condone killing. Then why did he say they shall surely be put to death? Their blood be upon them. Why did he say whoso sheddeth man's blood by man <laughs> shall his blood be shed? Why did he teach the death penalty what, what in all to, these scriptures? What happened to treat someone treat someone as you like to be treated? What happened to that, like? What does that have to do with Everyone's this? Everyone's meant to be equal. Everyone's meant to be equal and be treated with respect and you should respect no, the Bible, Well, I don't always agree with that either, in, Blaine. In, people in are Genesis, not equal in society. Look, in For example, fourth... pedophiles are not equal in society. Most people would wish they were dead. Uh, let me go to Daniel. Daniel, you're in Dublin. You're in Classic Hits. How are you, Daniel? Hi, how are you? Um, um, I'd just like to say to um, Steve, like, uh, he's talking a lot of hypocrisy. Like, first of all, you know, if, if he believes that, you know, God created man in his own image, well, then did he not create homosexuals and... And just, just on a second point there, he's saying he would kill someone. Um, what, what about one of the commandments, thou shall not kill? You know, that's God's word as well. You know, everything he's saying is just hypocritical. So 
I just think it's crazy. Well, I, like, I, well, I, I always believe the Bible was full of hypocrisy, but how whenever. <laughs> uh, I, but, but yes, let me go. He's already addressed the situation in relation to killing people. But uh, Pastor Anderson, I mean, God creates everybody in his own image. So surely to God, uh, pardon the pun, God created homosexuals and lesbians as well. They were not created that way. That is a choice that they made. Look, they have studied hundreds of identical twins who have the identical but he, DNA but, yeah, but okay, and, and I accept that. I accept, that there is I, no correlation. I accept that. But I, I accept that. But he did create their brain, which made them decide at some point in their early life that this is the way they were going in their life. That's, no, <laughs> God gives yeah. us free will. And so God gave them free will. They chose to become a filthy pervert, and they will suffer the consequences. They could have chosen Jesus, pervert. but they oh. chose to hate God and reject Jesus Christ and become a reprobate, according to Romans 1. There you go. You, you chose to be a filthy pervert. Daniel, that's what the gay people did. They chose to be filthy perverts, according to Stephen Emerson. That's right. I, I don't think I don't think we're going to get anywhere. <laughs> well, but see, the thing about it is, Stephen Anderson is only replicating what this guy, Matt McLaughlin in California, by the way, in case people have just tuned in, he's a Californian lawyer, and he just put a bill through, and if you get 365,000 signatures, which I don't, um, it could go to state ballot. And this is um, to have gay people sentenced to death. I mean, as you know, Ugandan law already have a similar uh, legislation, um, which can be quite dangerous. Do you believe that sometimes freedom of speech like this can go too far? Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. It can. Like, you know, I, I'm all for free speech, but, you know, some people can just take away too far. And it, it, at, at, at points like this, it becomes dangerous. And, you know, people would just use religion as a shield. And mm -hmm. it, 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 it's just crazy the way people can actually, you know, nosedive into a Bible and, you know, live their whole lives through it. And, you know, have these. I'm, I'm actually just sitting here disgusted listening to him, you know, it, it, it's, it's absolutely crazy. Yeah, the way that he can say stuff like that and believe it, you know, and, and I, but you can tell by him he truly believes the stuff. Oh, he does. Oh, there's absolutely no doubt that he believes. Of course, he, he does. Would. If, if if it was legal, he would do so as atrocious as putting a, a bullet to a, a gay man's head. You know. It's, mm. Okay, some of the text went. Somebody says now, but can you please get Ned Flanders off the radio. Um, he doesn't make sense. Um, another person says, uh, no, nah, that guy is just strange. Uh, I, well, I'm. I mean, I'm assuming Pastor Anderson, you're used to this kind of reaction to what you say. You must be. Well, I definitely am when I come on the Irish radio, but <laughs> there are plenty of Christians who agree with me because I'm not the only person who reads the Bible and has the Holy Spirit living inside them. I know loads of people. So. I know loads of people who read the Bible. I don't necessarily agree with them, but I do respect them. I know loads of people who read the Bible, but they don't go on like you. Well, they don't make they don't judge people the way you do. Well, you know, I can't speak for the kind of uh, watered down Christians that you've been talking to, but this is what the Bible says, and here I am preaching it, and there are plenty of people who believe it, and I am not the only one. There are millions and millions of people who believe exactly like me on this subject. Okay, I want to go to Peter. You're in Kildare. You're in Classic. It's just a few more minutes if I can. Uh, I don't want to keep uh, Stephen too long. Uh, Peter, how are you doing? You're in Kildare. Go ahead. You're in Classic Hits. Uh, yeah, I just had one quick question for the pastor there. Um, he said basically he would be willing to shoot gay people in the head if it was legal. Yeah. So I just want to ask him a quick question. If, the, if this law was passed and it did become legal to uh, shoot someone just for being gay, and one of his children came out and said they were gay... Oh, he's already he answered that. Shoot him. He, yeah, he's already answered that. He said they should be sentenced to death, yeah. Regardless of if it's his own child. Or yeah, he doesn't care. Right, right, right. <laughs> uh, well, fair enough, if he's a nut or he's a nut, or what can you do like? Okay, so that establishes for you that he's a nutter, is it? Is that it does, it does. Obviously, some man that's going to shoot his own child for being gay has to be mad, like. Um, to be quite honest, I think he should probably go and talk to someone and maybe uh, get himself looked at. I mean, you've you got to be honest, Stephen. Any man that do, would say that he would kill his own child. Now, I, I understand it's a hypothetical situation that your child it's would come forward and say they're anyway, gay. So it doesn't because matter. they'd be terrified of you. Yeah, well, they'd be terrified of you. But I mean, any child, you know, anybody who would say that, surely, you know, you, you got to look at yourself and search your own soul and say, what sort of person am I that I could actually say that I could do something like that to my own child? No, actually, any person no, that, that thinks it's again? normal for a man to have sex with another man needs to have his head examined. It's not me that's crazy. It's our world that's going crazy that thinks that that filthy, disgusting lifestyle is normal. 
So it, it, when, when you say it, it, we all need to have a head exam, every single text that I'm seeing coming in, there is actually, I can probably pretty much say nobody agrees with you. Well, I would say that um, the brainwashing's going well. I mean, Hollywood's doing a great job cramming sodomy and filth down our throats every day. And TV's doing a great job of promoting homosexuality on every single show. So the brainwashing's going great over there in Ireland. No, but no, it's not the brainwashing. Hold on a second. You know, a, a lot of people disagree with homosexuality. That's fine. I Everyone don't have an issue with that. Runs, listen to me. I don't, hang I've on, no, no, the point I'm making is, but they don't advocate killing people. Listen to me. I've been to Hollywood. I'm from California. The people who work in the movie industry in Hollywood are virtually all homosexuals, period. And that is the agenda. And it's being pumped all over the world, including Ireland. That is a fact. <laughs> okay. And if I am to agree with you in some sense, and if I'm to say to you that, yes, homosexuality has become very acceptable in society, thankfully for most gay men and women, um, that although there are people out there, and I accept their opinion, I accept their conscience, that they, uh, they don't accept homosexuality as being normal, um, I accept that from them, and I respect their view, but they don't want to see people die because of it. I'm looking at texts coming in, you know, and, and I know, for example, in this referendum we will have in this country very shortly, there will be people who will vote no. I accept that. I respect those people if that's what they want to vote. But they are not going to say, I vote no, I would like to see all gay people put to death. They're not going to go as far as you, Stephen. Nobody well, agrees with that. Uganda's on we the live right in a track. Civilized there, are 79, there are 79 countries in the world where homosexuality is illegal. 79, and many of them have the death penalty on homosexuality today. So half of the countries in our world... And does that make it right? There's loads of countries where no, they the chop Bible, their hands off for stealing. The Bible is what makes it right. I'm just pointing out that, no, I am not alone. You want to make it sound like, well, everybody thinks you're crazy and you're just out many of those, Many of those countries are fundamentalist countries. We know what the, most of us probably know most of those countries. So what? What does that have to do with anything? It's half the world that agrees with me. Half the world makes thinks homosexuality right. is disgusting. That makes it right. No, the Bible There's makes it right. parts of this world where women are still treated as second-class citizens. The Bible is the final authority. I'm just pointing out to you that, no, the whole world has not become a pervert. But then again, you treat your wife as a second-class citizen anyway. From no, what I've spoken to you in the past. My wife is not a second-class citizen. My wife is just... But you tell her what she can and can't wear. Of course you I tell her You tell your wife what, what she can and can't wear. Of course I tell her what to do because the Bible commands wives to obey their husbands and that husbands to be the head I mean? of the home. That's what the Bible says. Okay, stay there. Christopher, you're in Wickler. You're on Classic Hits. How are you? Go ahead, Christopher. Go ahead. And just, to, just to be um, honest, flat out, I'm gay, so I'd love to be talking to this pastor... Um, my personal view, and I hope he's listening, I think he's a fool. Yes, we're all entitled to our own opinion. But to put so much negative energy into this when there's other topics that need addressing is so stupid. Mm -hmm. um, me, myself, um, Ireland in general, it's, it's quite good when it comes to homosexuality. Like you said, the referendum in May, I hope it is passed. I'd be highly shocked if it isn't. Um, but myself, like I have been, I have dealt with people bullying or harassing me. For example, in the city centre, um, a group of people shouted at me, I should be burnt alive at the stakes. People like that, you know, there's always going to be bad in society. But I didn't believe there was people would still say something like that in this country. I know, like, uh, like I'm, I suffer from depression as well. I'm on tablets, so, mm -hmm. like, someone who, to have that said to you, like, like I'm, I'm, I might take more offence to, compared to someone who's, you know, maybe mentally stronger. Mm hmm but, like, it's just these stupid comments that people pass and they don't even think twice. Like this idiot on the line here from America. Just the crap that he's coming out with is unreal. Like, what, well, well what do you think? Well, the reason he's on the line is to back up this guy, Matt McLaughlin, who you might have been reading about in the papers uh, today and also in the journal tonight, who's trying to bring in legislation in California to have gay people sentenced to death. Um, now, he's put a well, bill through. You know, I mean, and this guy, he agrees with him. It's stupid, though. So if that's the case, why do gay people still pay taxes? Why do gay people still do this and this? Like, if, if countries are going to treat people any less, why are they still treated the same when it comes to paying money, when it comes to doing this and that? Like, if literally, if, like, I don't know what is, in the Republic of Ireland, there's, what, four million? I don't no. know how many of those are gay. Probably about six or seven percent, maybe. Yeah, like we, like, we as a community, like, we contribute quite a lot. Like, the, just because of 
the just AIDS alone is, is quite a contribution. No, no, you shut up for a minute, please. I'm still going to finish, okay? So um, hey, get AIDS and die, freak. I'm just trying. Well, that's a horrible thing. Yeah, to and say. people get into their car every morning and die in car crashes. So you're going to have to get over that. Okay? Yeah, I think you're going to have to get over that, Stephen. Yeah. You know, I mean, Stephen, just because somebody's gay doesn't give you, uh, you know, some sort of uh, faux pas to say what you want. You well, I, mean? I just did. Yeah, well, I know you did. Yeah. Yeah, and there's also consequences for that. You well, know, really, what day, are they? It, it's something's going to happen. Oh, what's going to happen? Someone's going to meet what, what, what about what about your God? Do you not reckon, Stephen, that your God might be looking down on you now, judging you at the moment if he exists? Is he looking down on you and judging the way you're behaving? Absolutely not. Because and the way I'm you're really... speaking, the way the hate and the hatred that you're spewing towards people. I am speaking exactly what the Bible teaches. So no, the Bible says, "Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? I hate them with perfect hatred." That's Psalm 139. And so, you know, I do hate homosexuals, and that's what the Bible teaches. So, no, I don't think God. The Bible is judging teaches me right you now. to hate people. God's going to send this freak book, to hell this Bible when he dies of AIDS. It? God's going to send this freak to hell when he dies of AIDS. If I die in a car crash, I'm going to heaven. So, for me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Oh no, 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 no! I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you're going yeah, to heaven. I hope all of your eight children turn out to be gays and lesbians, just to slap you right in the face. I'd, I'd really, really... I, I'm not holy, but... Well, I've never heard that before. That well, there you go. Like you said, I'm allowed to say things. All right, on that note, I think we're going to have to end it. Listen, I appreciate you coming on and staying with us, Pastor Stephen Anderson. I don't agree to a word you say, uh, but thank you very much. I appreciate it, and thanks very much indeed as well, Christopher. Yeah, I appreciate thank you coming you. on. Lots and lots of texts coming in. So he says, now I'll ask Stephen this, please. Uh, well, now he's gone now, so I can't. Our residents of China also do the same. Uh, uh, Pastor Stephen Anderson. Yes. I want to thank you very much for coming on the show at such short notice and giving us so much of your time. I really yeah, appreciate that. Thanks. And hopefully, if you're ever interested again, we'll definitely have you another time. Sounds good. Thanks. Thanks. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Yep, bye. Bye-bye.